And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in a few days. I do apologize for the length of time between videos, but I was very much focused on the charity stream that we ran this past Sunday. The Hunt for Rumble on Twitch would turn into a massive two-day event, raised over $5,600 for Seattle Children's Hospital, so I hope that you can understand as to why there was a little bit of time in between these uploads. But we are back. The Newfie Growlers ready to go back on the way by the way on the xbox series x we have made the jump we have made the upgrades so let's see if franchise modes any faster it probably won't be let's be honest with that though let's get down to business let's get this team set up and organized for this season uh one nicky rue let's just go ahead and give you the max uh two-way possible of course kusano there as well decent upgrade for kusano what was it a plus six last season it's not too bad at all Defensively, Plandowski or Plandowski up to a 74. Of course, Hugo Laflemme also there. Uh, you know, we might as well just sign Plandowski to what he wants or Plandowski. I gotta start saying Plandowski. Uh, we'll sign him to what he wants. Charlie Adaroche, we need to sign you as well. I mean, he's still looking for a two way deal, so we might as well give him the max. Harris Brantz. Harris, how about a max deal? And Mr. Jenkins. You're not very good either, but again, how about a max two-way deal? Benjamin Rood, we got to sign you up as well. A lot of these guys are going to be signing max level three-year two-way contracts. Mr. Olsen, sign you up as well. And from there, I mean, we picked up Belmar in the last draft, second round. Not that bad of a player. Somebody who, you know, in the future we're going to hope is a third-line defense or third-pair defenseman for us. Friggin and Kamachi, I mean... I don't know if I'm signing them yet. We're going to hold on. For the wingers, we go up to the top, and we start with DeMay, 74 now, at 22 years old. Looking for a big boy contract. We're going to give it to him. Hannon as well, 64 overall at 18 years old, fresh out of the draft, our fourth overall pick. Hopefully Aiden uh, can be uh, you know, a decent option for us. <laughs> maybe, Maybe he could... You might be able to say he could maybe aid our top players like LaRue. Anyway, left wingers, who do we have again here? Mr. Hutton, who again uh, is going to be dropped, which is an unfortunate loss, but we shouldn't have had him to begin with. Barbashev is garbage, but we might as well sign him. Why not? We're going to need some AHLers. And then for the centers, this is going to be the big contract here. Mr. LaRue, whew. Now, if we can get him down to a four-year deal instead, he should still be an RFA at the end of the deal. So we're going to look to do that, and that will hopefully be around the time where we actually have to start caring about how much money we're giving out. But, I mean, you look here, in terms of centers, we're not doing that badly. If Hawkins can go up by another you know, two to three points, he's a decent second-line center. It looks like we have our number one center in LaRue. Up the middle, at least, we're looking pretty good at this stage. Even if we have somebody like Brady Burns who hasn't really developed at this stage, but that's okay. Uh, Burbanich as well, we'll just go ahead and sign to that deal. So we'll skip forward a day. Uh, let's make sure that everybody signs here, and it looks like they did. Perfect. Uh, so in terms of all expiring deals, nobody on an expiring deal. 35 contracts, 9 exempt. So I think we can go ahead and just sign all of these guys too. Why not? They'll be under exempt deals. We'll give an ELC to every single one of these players, even though they are mostly, you know, absolute garbage. <laughs> and uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, low top six. It used to be an okay potential, kind of, and it hasn't been for a very long time. So there we go. The roster is set. 35 contracts, 14 exempt deals to help fill out this roster. Uh, we'll sim ahead to the beginning of free agency. The coaching staff is going to need to be completely reworked, which is not surprising. We knew that was coming. I might end up doing this uh, off screen quickly because it'll be a hell of a lot easier to do. And then scouting wise, I imagine we can fully upgrade. Yeah, we can upgrade the scouting department quite heavily. So what I'll do is skip ahead to the beginning of the preseason. I'll get you a look at what this roster is going to be. And then we'll see how the season sim goes. All right, guys, here we are, the start of a new season. Let's get you a look at the team. Although, first and foremost, the coaching staff. Uh, interesting because we do have an A-plus 
head coach Joe Thornton still there, and then some familiar names leading the way down in the AHL. Let's see if we can turn them into some top-notch coaches. We get a look at the team, and honestly, it's not that bad. We have a positive on every single forward line. The top line starts off with Marcus Vitasek next to Zach LaRue and Cole Huckins. Now, the down note to having an A-plus coach, he doesn't work well with LaRue, uh, but obviously, if it's worth boosting up everybody else, you know, if we can boost up everybody else, it's worth it. Second line, we have Justin Gill, Josh Lawrence, and Guy Boucher, so it's... It's all right, I guess, given the circumstances. Third line's pretty good in terms of the overall. Jean Savard, Pascal Duchesne, and Yon Lashing. And the fourth line, some decent overalls here, but unfortunately, unfortunately, this is where their best chemistry is. Jordan DeMay, Brady Burns, and Jacques Lapierre. So, again, obviously, as you would expect, the best version of this team that we have had yet. Still not in a competitive shape, but we're getting there. Defensively, we start off with this top pairing, which is honestly half decent. Darius Rycroft and Hugo Leflem. Second pair, Philippe Sauve. I think I need to double check how to pronounce the name. People have told me I forgot it is what it is. He's next to Charlie DeRoger. And a third pair of Frank Jenkins and Oscar Plandowski. The goaltending is what you would expect. Russia and Elliot Cousineau, who did not improve at all uh, between the offseason and now, which is very concerning. And then down in the AHL, we have the best of the rest. And unfortunately, it's not really a good thing when, like, Ivan Ivan's kind of leading the way, you know. And defensively, yeah, it's it's rough. And obviously, we don't have goaltenders there, so we signed veterans. Marc-Andre Fleury took Rask uh, and somebody else. Bobrovsky. We gave Sergei Bobrovsky $19 million more million because why not, right? As if Sergei hasn't gotten enough money. So quickly, what we're going to do, sim to the beginning of the regular season. We're going to take a look at the overall for the team. And then, then, we shall see if there is anything out there for us this year. Is it going to be a very important year for us to essentially tank? That is the hope, not that we have to do much in order to tank. 74, 69, and a 55 are the grades. Oh, 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 Lord. At least the offense is over a 70. For the record, Colorado is 91, 87, and a 77. Just to give you an idea on how badly we're just completely screwed. <laughs> uh, let's do this, though. The draft class. Are we playing for play? Oh, Fisette. Okay, here we go. Are we playing for player development? Or are we playing... For a top five pick, Ramparts, Quebecois, Cesar Fisette. So that does not help. But Rayom could be decent. Or or not. Or not. Okay, I mean, you can see here, there are quite a few players that, you know, we would expect to be in the first round. Medium top six forward, medium four defenseman, you know the deal. But we've struck out on the first two. Fontaine, also not available. Eve Fontaine. What about Sawyer Brower? Also not available. Turgeon is. Okay, thank God. We at least have somebody who's first round eligible. Louis Turgeon. What about Bates? Bates is also available. Okay, so Turgeon or Bates. Definitely the two players that we're going to be targeting. Uh, Jonas Nickerson, not available. Nor is this dude out of Drummondville. Hugo LeClaire, not available. Ramuski, oh boy. Oh boy, second, oh no. Okay, uh, second round is Baron. The third round could be the same. Pete Parra out of St. John. Okay, this again isn't going to be, oh, okay. This, again, isn't going to be an amazing draft year. I'll say two things as we continue this episode. One, 19 wins is pretty damn good. And secondly, burying the lead here. My God, is the sim speed lovely. Lovely. <laughs> On next-gen consoles for franchise mode. Oh, God bless you, Microsoft. Whew, I'm, no, I'm used to sitting here for like five plus minutes. It was like two, if that to sim an entire season, maybe even a minute and a half. That was fantastic. 
Let's get into recapping the season. We'll, of course, start off with the fact that we won 19 games. Good for 45 points. Still the worst team in the league by a very large margin, though. Uh, goal scoring wise, though, not our biggest issue. I mean, unsurprisingly, it's it's the goaltending and defense that is still absolutely abysmal. But the offense is at least somehow competent. I don't understand, but that's where we're at right now. Zach LaRue, 20 goals, 65 points. Pretty damn good. You had Jan Lashing on the third line with 52. Huckins, 47, as well as Lawrence and Gill. I mean, not bad. Guy Boucher scored 30 goals, for God's sakes, without power play time. Holy hell. Remind me to put this kid on the power play next year. 30 goals? Jesus. Well, I guess somebody has to score, but god damn. Vitasek, the underrated 21. Defensively, 50 points! 20 and 30 for Hugo. Oh, Hugo, you beautiful bastard. Up to an 83. Up to an 83. Hugo, I stand Hugo so hard, I turn into Philip DeFranco. And for goaltending, I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's what we expected. Cousineau, though, up by another five, up all the way to 62 overall. He's getting better. That's promising for our medium starter potential goalie. So I know this draft is going to be rough for us, right? Like, we don't have the incredible new additions on the way, but we are seeing some pretty damn good developments from our top players right now as Ryan Merkley broke the game. Jesus. Hugo, though, not bad. Second in goals amongst defensemen. Very promising stuff here. I have a lot more optimism than I did, you know, than I did just three or four episodes ago as Marshall Claremont is going to win the Calder. But barely. Boucher, you could argue, despite the plus-minus, got robbed if he loses it. 30 goals for him. We might just have... We might just have a Calder winner. I'm intrigued. <laughs> very, very intrigued. Well, let's see what happens, though, in the playoffs. The locker room chemistry at a 49, which isn't surprising because we were a pretty bad team. So you got to look there at the... Uh, playoff bracket, of course. I know I've been kind of skipping over what's been going on with other teams. We've been so focused on everything else, you know, about this team, you know, and about the series. It's been focused on this team, as you would expect. But Dallas does win the Stanley Cup this year. Maybe we'll remember to take a look at their team. You guys were a little bit upset I didn't look at Arizona last year. So the first thing we'll do is properly recap the season as Dallas beats Carolina in five games in the cup final and taking a look here now let's see what we have on dallas tyler sagan this dude tuomo latkainen rupe hints is still there ivan Lodnia. their rosters changed quite a bit at this stage which doesn't really surprise me with how screwed up well they ended up with carter hart so there you go who only lost two games the entire way it doesn't surprise me that some of these teams are going to be crazy because, again, trade values are still broken, unfortunately. But Kucherov wins the Art Ross for the second year in a row, as well as the Hearts. We're looking at the Calder. They gave it to Commissarek. Wasn't he in third? Or was he? No, he was the dude directly ahead. That sucks. We were that close to having our first ever Calder winner, and it just didn't happen. Did any of our players pick up any hardware down in the AHL? The answer is Drapeau, which is... Uh, the AHL equivalent of the Masterton, so it is just random and gives it to horrible players. With that, lottery result time. We know we're not really in a dramatic situation here. We end up with the number two overall pick, which isn't that bad. But all in all, I mean, I'll take it. And again, hopefully we've seen some decent improvement. How often does Alex Ovechkin finish his career in Arizona? It's unbelievable. We will see, though, if... I mean, obviously, I didn't look at the full list of players available. I'm hoping now that we end up with some surprises in this next draft. Maybe some you know, players who manage to really climb their way up the charts that'll be able to help us out here. And, of course, at this stage, if we can't get the elite players, at least can we get that top-notch depth that will turn us into a winner. Fisette would have been an amazing pickup, but... It was not to be. 
So we go back to the queue. Again, Gaspard Realm is not going to work out for us, nor, nor is Fontaine or Brower. So that leaves us with Turjan or Sean Bates here in this first round. Not promising potentials either way. 21 goals this season for Turjan. No weaknesses. Pretty well-rounded. Good shot. Two-year ETA with a Gartner comparison. And then we have Bates, the defenseman. C's and B's. Character, lack of size, quickness. <sighs> no comparison and no ETA. I mean, the argument is that we really do need defense here, but... We, we just don't have the information that we really need on Sean Bates. It's saying he's a hell of a skater, though. He has good mobility and good foot speed, but lack of quickness. So, really good speed and good agility, but horrible acceleration is what I'm seeing there. Lack of size isn't much for a defenseman. Who cares? The character cares about winning. So, I'm so basically, he's just an immature kid. I mean, it really comes down to, do we need a forward or a defenseman more? Obviously, we need both. But it's, who do we want to hedge our bets with here? I mean, you look at these trade values. I mean, I told you, these trade values are fucked. Look at Josh Lawrence's trade value. This is why I haven't been doing anything else other than draft a glory. Trade values are still broken. This game, this game, NHL 21, this game came out. On October 16th, it has been over a month, and this is still broken. COVID or not, holy hell. That's all I can say. Jesus. Anyway, and really it kind of skews the opinion of like, hey, well, do we need a forward or a defenseman? Well, up for forwards, I mean, we do have Marquardt, we have Hannon, Huckins, and LaRue defensively. We really only have Hugo and some medium sixes. I'd argue we need a defenseman more. It's a bigger risk to take the defenseman here. The forward seems like more of a slam dunk. But we're going to hope that he's a medium four. He should be. I expect Terjan's a medium top six. We're going to go for the defenseman. Let's take Sean Bates from the Acadie of Bathurst Titan. And indeed, indeed, he is a medium top four defenseman. 67 overall, OFD. Not too shabby. Let's look at the skating. Yeah, 90 agility, 90 speed, but awful acceleration. That is exactly what we expected. So Sean Bates, not a bad addition. 84 off, uh, 84 defensive awareness and stick checking, by the way, too. It's pretty decent. So honestly, I'm happy with that. You know, again, unless, unless the forward here was a medium elite, which would be heartbreaking, we did well for ourselves here. And he was, oh, thank God. No, wait, Fontaine wasn't our guy. Holy shit, though. My God, did the Coyotes get a steal? 70. Holy shit. That is one thing they did well. There are some steals like Montreal done goofed. Holy hell. Where is our guy here? It was Turjan, right? Yeah. And he was a 68. So a higher rated forward. You can make the argument, right? Would you want a higher rated forward by one, to be honest? I think we did well. We did well for ourselves taking that defenseman. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. It would have been better to have a medium elite, obviously, but it's okay. So now we get to the second round, and here's where we need a little bit of help. I never want to see a Hugo again after the uh, Hunt for Rumble streams. Again, Drummondville, Ramouski, Chikudami, Quebec, Valdor, and then St. John with Pete Para. I mean, a medium nine forward is honestly okay for the second round. We'll take him, and then we'll see who else is available, but... You know, 27 points in 65 games, 18 years old, apparently injury prone. Three-year ETA is not that bad. I expect him to be about a 63. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. Your boy knows. Your boy knows. But Pete Parra, welcome to the team. Uh, honestly, well-rounded for a playmaker, though. Very well-rounded stats or attributes. Not a bad addition, you know, for as downtrodden as I was after seeing who was available or who wasn't available in this draft at the start of the episode. I'm feeling pretty good right now. The question is, can we keep up this little bit of momentum that we have going here? So, LaPierre on Quebec. Valdor, Blaineville, Quebec, Valdor, Gatineau, Sherbrooke, oh God. Gatineau, the Titan, the Titan, the Titan. Uh, Marcel Bouchard, not looking good, but he's the next player available to us. Quebec, Ramouski, we got the Islanders again. 
Victoriaville, Gatineau, Drummondville, Val d'Or, Gatineau, Chicoutimi, Moncton. We get our first Wildcat, Miles Bochensky. Rio Naranda, Val d'Or, Drummondville, Halifax, Reed Shore. And then Moncton again. Okay, so this is going to be abysmal. At least we hit with the first two picks of the draft, but this is going to be abysmal. Uh, Bouchard, we know, is, is terrible. It's terrible. Like, he can't skate at all. Like, no acceleration whatsoever. He's going to be a defensive defenseman with that size. And then there's the center, Adrian McIntyre, who's just okay, I guess. Like, Bouchard, we know a low top six isn't going to help that much. The hope would be he turns into a medium top six. We're going to take him and then take McIntyre afterwards, but obviously having to select a low top six defenseman in the third round yeah, unfortunately, that hope of some better depth in this draft was not granted. So we have a grinder here in Adrian McIntyre. I'm hoping for a medium bottom six. That is exactly what we get, 59 overall. So that's okay. Someone who has a chance to maybe crack the fourth line in the future. And then from there, it just falls off. You got Miles Bochensky. Shore, and then that player from Moncton, another Sea Dog, and Simon Lenevy. Lenevy. Lebe? Lenevy. Uh, let's see. Ramuski, Vicomo, Rio Naranda, Shawinigan, another Moncton player, Pierre Leroy. Yeah, in terms of those half decent options, they are just not going to be there. So we'll take a look at who was next on the board. It's going to be Bochensky. Decent point total, but he's a 20-year-old. Oh, God, he's an overager, and he only has that point total. This guy's never going to make it. This is a complete waste of a pick, but we'll take him. He's a 60 overall. He is never going to make it. He might not crack the AHL lineup. That is brutal. I'm happy with the first two picks. I'm happy with the player development that we've seen. So we have another overager here. But no doubt about it, the lack of depth in this draft is really going to hurt us. It's just some more bad luck uh, in the aftermath of picking up, yeah, really a couple decent players in the Hugo draft. And then uh, Lenebeau. I mean, you're going to be terrible. Yeah, you're going to be awful. Just awful. But we'll take him. Low seventh. Hell of a way to end the draft. Again, I really like the first two picks. I don't hate the medium bottom six uh, forward in McIntyre, but Bates and Para at least get us two other decent options on this squad. And overall, I still think we're in a decent spot. Again, we're improving, winning more games, getting good player developments. I mean, Cousineau is up to a 66, which is very nice. Defensively, now Hugo's an 85. We didn't see much development. From anybody else here, though, and actually, let's go look at, as long as it's still, yeah, the progress reports, I was going to say, it should still let me look. Uh, we have some decent improvements here. Again, not much from LaRue. He's going to cap out at an 87, but good improvement from Hugo, good improvement from Hawkins. Uh, LaPierre now up to a 77. Again, we have some improvement elsewhere. Boucher, though, now up to a 75. I think he was like a 68 or a 69 at the start of the season. 73 now for uh, Sobe, up by two points. Dandino, big improvement now, up to a 71 for the medium bottom six forward. Marcourt up to a 69. Holden up to a 68. It's promising. We are seeing some decent player development here. I don't think we're completely screwed, and certainly not as desperate to up the quality sliders, which again would only it would help, but it would also hurt in the long term. So for now, that'll do it for this one. I hope you did enjoy. You know the deal. Drop a like, subscribe if you have not already done so to follow everything that we do on this channel. And of course, I want to give a shout out to those of you who contribute to this lovely thing we got going on here over on Patreon. There is a new episode as well out today. Go check that out if you haven't. I love you all. I will see you next time. Goodbye.